welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, then a very big hello. So I have an information video coming up for you guys today. So, so many of you loved my five things I wish I knew before moving to Canada video. I think it's at something like 9,000 views now. So thank you so, so much. Now, I actually had a long list for that video and I had to cut it down to five because I didn't want it to go on for too long. So I've decided to give you a part two of another five things I wish I knew before moving to Canada. Now if you haven't watched my other video first then please go check it out. I'm going to leave it linked in the eye and down in the description box because I do point out some very big things that I didn't realise before I moved to Canada and it's helped me since I've been here. Now if you're new to my channel then obviously a very big hello and welcome. Me and my boyfriend Jake have been in Canada now for one year and two months. We moved here on a IEC work and holiday visa it's a two-year visa and we're currently going ahead to get our permanent residency for Canada at the end of our visa this year now a quick disclaimer before I start I just want to remind you guys I am NOT a professional every video I upload is just my experience here in Canada and it's my journey that I take you along with I also just want to point out that I, I do live in Ontario Canada just by Niagara Falls so all of this stuff is just relevant to this province and obviously other provinces have different rules and I've never lived there so I obviously can't give my feedback or my opinions for those places. So this is specifically for Ontario, Canada. So let's get started straight on into the video. Grab your notebook and pen because I am going to give you five different points that I wish I knew before moving to Canada. So point number one is taxes. The joy of taxes. Now, if you live in the UK, like I was born and raised in the UK, when you go to purchase something in the store, it is exactly how much it says on the shelf. For example, a loaf of bread is one pound. When you go to the checkout, it is also one pound. Here in Canada, they like to add taxes extra. They don't pull it in with the price. So this can get quite confusing because some things don't have taxes on and some things do in the grocery store. For example, some chocolate for $2, you will then take it to the checkout and it would be $2 plus the tax. So you need to work out when you're doing your shopping, um, if you're someone like me who likes to like budget everything, you need to remember the taxes. Now every single province is different. Some provinces don't have taxes. Some have extra taxes. So I'm specifically talking about Ontario in general. But like I said, if you're moving to a different province, then please do look it up. And so definitely don't quote me on this, but I do believe the tax here in Ontario is 13% on everything that you buy. So just keep that in mind when you're purchasing things because I know when I first went into the store and I bought something and then I took it to the checkout, it was more. I looked on my receipt and it was all taxes. I don't know why they just don't pull it in with a price like the UK, but anyway, I just thought I'd point that out to you guys because that's something that I didn't know about when I first moved to Canada. So tip number two is about the weather. I get asked all the time is, is it really that cold in Canada? Now I just want to put, point out a few things that they get the actual seasons here in Canada. So yes, it is freezing cold in the winter, but you also have to remember how hot it gets in the summer. I just first want to talk about the winters first. Um, we've had quite a nice winter this year and last year as well when we first arrived. There has nowhere near been as much snow as I thought we would have. And it's not necessarily in December either. We were very lucky enough to wake up to a white Christmas this, this Christmas just gone. But since then, we really haven't had that much snow until the back end of January and early Feb February. I don't know if that's been always like this. I know a lot of people at my work did say that there used to be a lot more snow, but obviously the world is changing and global warming, etc. But I just want to let you guys know that I actually haven't experienced proper snow until the end of January, early February is when we're getting the most snow. And to the question, is it actually as cold as people say it is? Obviously, it depends on what part of Canada that you're in. Like, obviously, up north, I've seen photos of snow above people's heads 
and it's like in the minus every single day. It has been minus eight, minus nine for the last week and it has been extremely cold. Now I just want to point out that I did bring a coat with me from the UK but it was nowhere near as warm as enough as what I needed and I physically can't wear it out in the weather conditions here in Canada. I actually had to purchase a coat over here that did the minus degrees and keep me nice and warm just because it is freezing. So make sure you've got your gloves, your scarves, even work walking from the bus stop to my house, which is literally like a two minute, two minute walk. My hands are so cold. So yes, it does get as cold as it says it does online and what you hear about in the news, but just remember that they do see the seasons. So even though it's freezing cold in December, January, February, even March, then in the summer, we get the best summers. And this was something I was so happy about. I love the heat so much. I lived in Cyprus for three years where it was like 40 degrees every single day and I live and breathe the sun. And I was so, so surprised last summer when we got to actually have 30 to 40 degree heat in the summer as well here. And here in Ontario specifically, we get humidity very, very bad. So that every single day is so humid. Now, I don't know if this is the same all across Canada, but especially where I live, it was very, very humid. And I had to buy an air conditioning unit because in my apartment it didn't have air con and we were literally living with the, the windows and the doors open and it, there was just no breeze. So that is just a little tip. If you're moving into an apartment, check if it's got air conditioning. If not, then you will have to purchase it because it does get extremely hot, which is obviously a positive as well because you want to be able to experience those hot summers and cold winters. And I just want to point out as well, like from the UK going on holiday to Spain and Greece and those sort of places, the hottest part of the day normally is like 12 and 1 at lunchtime. But here in Canada, specifically um, Ontario, I seem to find the hottest point of the day was between 4pm and 6pm which was just literally crazy because I have work at 5 a.m. in the morning, so I have to go to bed at like 7, 8 at night. And it was so hot at those times of the day. So even though you have to uh, bring your coats, your scarves, your jumpers, also remember your bikinis and your shorts and t-shirts because in the summer, everybody lives at the lakes and the beaches and the waterfalls. And I'm just gonna tell you now, I am so, so happy with the summers here as well as the winters. So point number three is your UK driving license. Now I just wanted to point this out because this is something that me and Jake did not know about and this is something we could have gotten a lot of trouble for. So we obviously have a driving license over in the UK and once we reached Canada we hired a car for a few months just to get to learn the area and obviously moving into a house we had to like move furniture about but then we learned you could actually only drive on a UK driving license for a certain amount of time. Now, every single province is different, so please make sure you Google it and find out depending on where you live. So here, Ontario, Canada, you can only drive on a UK driving license for three months. Once you've reached that three months mark, you do have to change over to a Canadian uh, driving license, which is super easy and really quick actually. I've actually got a video about driving in Canada, which I'll link up in the eye and down below if you're interested. But you literally just go to a Service Canada and you just literally swap over your license. You give them your UK one, they will give you some paperwork back and it will then come in the post in the next few weeks. Just make sure you do get it changed over, if not before the three months, because if you get pulled over, then obviously you can get your license taken off of you. Uh, we actually got pulled over, I think it was in the second month of being in Canada. We were driving um, along Niagara-on-the-Lake. We didn't realize that we were going over the speed limit because there's not really a lot of speed limit signs over here. A police officer pulled us over and told us that we only had a month left on our driving license. We were, we were super confused. We didn't know what he was on about. So we asked him and he was really, really helpful. He just let us know that we could only drive over in Canada for three months on our license before we have to get it changed over. Please do check the province rules. Just Google it. I'm sure it will say on Google somewhere 
because I'd hate for anybody to not know this information and get their license taken off them when it is simple, when it is just a simple step, just turning up to Service Canada and getting your license changed over for a small fee. You can do that as soon as you move over to Canada. If you move over within the first few weeks and know that you love it here and you're gonna stay here, then just book an appointment to go get that done. Uh, all the Service Canada's around our area is just a walk-in. You don't need to book an appointment. Obviously, at the minute, there has been a few queues outside because they're only letting a few people in at a time. But yeah, it's just super easy to get it changed over and it's not worth the risk. So point number four, I just wanna talk about pay over here in Canada. Now, this is not gonna be for every single job, so please just check with your job. But it has, I've had two jobs while being here in Canada and obviously Jake's got one job. And in all of those jobs, we have been paid bi-weekly, which means every other week. So every other Friday, we get paid and I've heard from a few people that that's across Ontario. Like in the UK, if you're watching this and you're from Canada, you may not know, but a lot of workplaces are so different in the UK. A lot of workplaces are on the last Friday of every month or the first Friday of every month, which thinking back to it now is such a long time to wait for to be paid because you will get paid on the first or the last day of every month or the last Friday of every month, and you have to have your pay last for exactly that whole month before you get paid again. I know there is some workplaces that get paid every week in the UK, but I just wanted to tell you about this um, just in case you are one of those people that gets paid weekly or monthly and you're intrigued to know what it's like over in Canada. Like I said, across the three jobs that me and Jake have had, it's every other week, every other Friday. And I absolutely love that because we get paid twice every month. If you're running a bit short at the end of one week, then you've only got an extra week to till you get paid again, which is super, super nice. And like I said, this is something I've heard about a few places here in Canada, um, especially Ontario, that is every other week. Um, please let me know down below if you're from a different province and what it's like over there. But definitely here in Ontario, Canada, they do do it bi-weekly, which is super nice. You don't have to wait a whole month to get paid. I used to hate working in retail in the UK and get paid on the last Friday of every month because you have to wait another four weeks till you get paid especially when your bills go out of the first you have to try and try and make it to the end of the month for the rest of the money so yeah so point number five is all about healthcare. Now, I did do a bit of Googling before I moved to Canada, but I've definitely learned a lot more since I've moved here. Now, I thought it was gonna be like America, I'm not gonna lie, where you don't have healthcare and every single doctor's, dentist appointments you go to, you have to pay. That's why a lot of people get into debt because of hospital bills. I was scared that one day when I get pregnant, am I gonna have to pay for to deliver my baby. So this is definitely one thing that I, I really think about and I always think about the future. And I was pleasantly su surprised to find out that they have something very similar to the UK. So if you're not from the UK, we have a system called the NHS. So when we get paid, we have a bit of money that goes out of our pay, which pays for our healthcare. And it's absolutely amazing. They have an amazing system in the UK for this. Over here in Ontario, we also have something very similar and it's called OHIP. Now, I don't know if this is across Canada or not. This is specifically something for Ontario and this is something I'm going through right now. So something called OHIP, it basically works exactly the same as the NHS where you get your healthcare paid for you. So I'm just gonna read off of the website now how you can be eligible for OHIP. So it must be a Canadian citizen or have immigration status as set out in Ontario's Health Card Act. Have your permanent or main home in Ontario be physically present in Ontario for 153 days in any 12 month period. So me and Jake have recently been here for one year and that is why we are applying for OHIP and we haven't left the country at all, go on vacation obviously because of the pandemic. So we have been in the country for at least 153 days or more for the 12 month period. It was super easy to apply for. I just printed out the paperwork online. I filled it out, it just asked for my SIN number. Um, it asks you for a letter from your employer, prove that you're gonna be employed for the next six months with them. And also just a letter 
from the landlord or your housing just to prove that you've got a house over here if you're renting or you've bought here in Canada. So it was super simple, super straightforward. You just had to go to a Service Canada to hand it in and then we are still waiting for our OHIP. I do believe there is a bit of a delay for the OHIP card at the minute, anything between three and six months to get it posted, but you do get a piece of paper that you can keep with you in case you do need to go visit the hospital or the doctors or something. Now that was the five points that I wanted to just point out to you and I wish I knew before moving to Canada just because these are things that something that I personally stress about and I just think it's nice to know and ease your mind that there is things out there for example like healthcare. So I'm just going to summarize all of the points to you now. So the first point I talked about was taxes. Just remember when you're buying things in stores and online the taxes are extra than what it says on the shelf. Point number two is all about the weather. Yes it gets extremely hot cold here in Ontario but it also gets really hot up to 40 degrees some days and the humidity is crazy so remember to pack your shorts your bikinis your swimsuits and you'll be spending a lot of time down the in the beach and on the lakes Point number three is just make sure you check in your province how long your UK driving license is valid for. Over here in Ontario, you can only drive on your UK driving license for three months before you gotta get it changed over. So make sure you get it changed over as soon as you get here to not worry or stress about that. Point number four is I just want to talk about that we get paid bi-weekly over here in Ontario, Canada. Like I said, it might not be every single job, but especially the last three jobs that we've had here in Canada have been bi-weekly. And point number five is all about your healthcare system. Just letting you know that they do have healthcare over here in Ontario, Canada. It's called OHIP and it's extremely easy to apply for once you've been in the country for 12 months and have been in the country for 152 days of the year. I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. If you did, then please hit the thumbs up. If you're new here, I would love you to hit subscribe and I would love to hear your story. If you're planning to move to Canada anytime soon or in the future, then I'd love to hear what part of Canada that you would like to move to down in the box and what part of England you are from. But thank you so much for watching. I will see you on my day off vlog on Monday. Bye-bye.